Hi, dear ones. It's so good to be with you today. and It's time for Sunday School again. I'm glad you've decided to join me um, in this lesson today. We're going to talk today about a king named Jehoshaphat. But before we get to him, I want to tell you just a little bit of a story because our, t our topic today is about how God gives us victory when we obey him. Many years ago, um, in 2012, so before most of you were born, um, I was at a different church, and we went through some hard times at that church, and God really had paved a way for me to leave. So in August of 2012, I left my church that I had been in for a very long time where my kids had grown up and um, it was a special place to me. But we were kind of fighting battles and it was not a place that God wanted me to continue in. And so I ended up at First United Methodist Church and I believe that God blessed me because I in that decision to leave, I was really obeying what he was urging me to do. And so I landed at First United Methodist Church and have been there ever since. Really started there um, playing the piano and um, being really active in April of 2013. And so I tell you that because this month is my 10 year anniversary at First United Methodist Church. And it's just a, a joy to be a part of that church and, and to be there with you every Sunday and to have been doing this journey together for the last few years. So it just kind of leads us into this story today. Now, I'm not going to read you the whole scripture, but it does come from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And if you want to read it with your moms and dads, it'll be verses 1 through 7, and then 12 through 18, and then 20 through 26, and then we finish with 29 and 30. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about those scriptures as we talk here this morning. So the book of First and Second Chronicles give us a lot of information about the different kings. And remember, there were kings who, who led God's people. Some were good, and some were not so good, and some were just okay. The king we're going to talk about today was very good. He followed God, and he helped lead God's people to follow God also. And his name is a little hard to pronounce, but his name was Jehoshaphat. Try to say that with me. Jehoshaphat. It's really complicated. But it's okay if you can't read it or say it. Well, King Jehoshaphat found out that he had some enemies. The Moabites and the Ammonites. And they were coming to war against God's people. And he was very troubled by this. And he asked God what he should do. And that's always what we should do, is ask God first. Well, Jehoshaphat also led his people to be part of that request and that process. He asked his people to fast. Now, fasting means going without food for a time in order to spend time focusing on what God wants us to do and time praying to God. Well, with all the people, Jehoshaphat prayed to God. And he set a good example for his people in prayer by being mindful that God was the ruler over all and over all of them and that he had given them this land that they were living in. And he asked God to save them from the Ammonites and the Moabites. Now God answered King Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat and his people by giving a message to one of the priests. Now, I won't say his name very well, and that's a good reminder to you. The Bible is full of names that are hard to pronounce, and those people aren't living here now for us to ask them how to pronounce their names. For instance, sometimes people look at my first name and they say, how, to pronounce, how do you pronounce that? And I say, Renee. So they know, well, we can't ask these people. So if I'm saying it wrong, God will forgive me, I think. So anyway, God answered King Jehoshaphat and his people by giving a message to one of the priests. And the priest's, name's, priest's name was Jehaziel. 
God told them they didn't need to be afraid or discouraged because this battle belonged to the Lord. God gave them specific instructions through the priest that the next day they would march down against them. They would find them in the desert, and he reminded them again that they would not have to fight this battle. They would just need to stand firm and watch God win it for them. Can you imagine? I'm sure that that was strange to God's people. Um, that I, If they knew that people were coming to attack them, I'm sure they thought that they should be planning and getting weapons ready and making that plan about how to counterattack or how to go after them first. But Jehoshaphat and his people trusted God. And through their trust, they obeyed God's plan. Just like I obeyed God's plan so many years ago when I left my old church. Now, I don't think God always leads us to leave a church, but at that time it was very difficult and it was time to make some changes. Well, back to our story. The next day, they set out just as God had told them to. And on their way, they even sang praises to God. And I love that, that they went into battle worshiping and singing praises to God. And the Bible says that as they sang, the Lord sent ambushes against the Moabites and the Ammonites. And when that happened, they began fighting against each other instead of against the Israelite people. Well, the, by, by the time God's people got to them, they had destroyed each other. The, their enemies had destroyed each other. And all that was left for Jehoshaphat and his people to do was to go and get the plunder. Plunder. And that means they got all the valuable stuff from their enemies. There was so much left that it took them three days to get it all. Well, that's crazy to me as well. Well, when it was all over, the people praised God. The Lord had fought the battle for his people. And they only had to obey him and do what, they, what he told them to do. And the news of this amazing event traveled so fast to other places that many other kingdoms began to trust God as well. And that's pretty awesome that because of Jehoshaphat and the Israelites trusting God and winning the battle, that the story got spread around and other people started to trust God. Well, the Bible is full of stories where God told people to do something specific. I believe that he told me it was time to leave my church. And when those people in the Bible obeyed, he helped them. He gave them that big word that we put together earlier, victory. Well, we didn't put it together, but... It was victory that they were looking for. Now, you and I might not have an actual battle or war to fight, but there are things all the time that we struggle with, for sure. Maybe you're having a hard time focusing at school, or you might be having a tough time getting along with a friend or even a family member. Those are the kinds of battles we face, and God can help us with them, just like he helped Jehoshaphat. And all of the people, God will help us. God wants us to talk to him when we are confused or upset or worried about something. And when we don't know what to do, he wants us to ask for help. And when we trust and obey God, he is going to give us victory. Now, that doesn't mean that we always come in first place in a competition. And it doesn't mean that it's always going to turn out the way we want it to. But it does mean that God can help us have the confidence that we need and peace when we face hard things. Remember I told you I wanted to read to you that last little part. And it's 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 29 and 30. And it says, When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God has given him rest, had given him rest on every side. So God gave him peace at the end of all of this story. 
<clears throat> he spread the word to other kingdoms and they trusted God too. And Jehoshaphat was able to live in peace. And we can do the same thing when we're having trouble at school, when we're having trouble with a friend or a family member, when life is hard or when somebody gets sick and we don't know what to do for them. We can trust God. We can ask him for help. We can ask him what to do. And then you'll feel it right in your heart about what you're supposed to do. And when we obey God, he will give us peace and rest on every side. And I love that about our God. Don't you? Well, let's close with a very simple prayer. Dear God, thank you for helping us when we follow you. We praise you today and we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. I think I better ask God to help me find my voice because it's. I think I just haven't had enough water today. So I'm going to go drink some water and I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you the next time. I love you, everybody. Bye-bye.